I'd like to use as a sermonic theme this morning, I got you. I got you. A lady is traveling by herself to the Caribbean. She's catching an early flight. She is now boarding the plane. As she is walking to her seat, perhaps unbeknownst to her, she passes out. When she comes to on the airplane, the stewardess and passengers are holding her and looking on with concern. They help her up and they help her to get to her seat. They encourage her to get some medical attention, but she assures them she's fine, and she knows the source of her passing out. There are times when we all need assistance. There's times when we all need help. There are times when no matter how together we are, we need intervention beyond ourselves. Alicia got the call we all hope we never get. A month and a half ago, she got the call that her husband had been shot. He did not survive. It was as if the ground opened up and swallowed her whole. At first, there was nothing more than shock pressing at her temples. Her family reached in to catch her to break the fall but she could not be caught. It was a fall that they could not catch her from. She was inconsolable. She is a shell a month and a half later of who she used to be. She never wanted to live this life alone. She thought she had found her soulmate. She stares at herself in the mirror but she doesn't recognize the 25-pound lighter stranger that looks back at her. She yells at people that give her good meaning advice. Stop telling me you understand what I'm going through because you don't. Sometimes the absence of a loved one leaves a big hole and it's all we can do to stay upright. There are times when we need assistance. There are times when we need help. There are times when no matter how put together we are, we need intervention that is beyond our capabilities. This is where we enter the biblical text today. The Israelites have been through a long period of living in a climate of harsh treatment. They came during a time of famine to Egypt. Pharaoh began to perceive them as a threat. To control them, he imposed hard labor, and he subjected their bodies to harsh treatment. This was before labor unions, and they were subjected to unfair work conditions. They had to work and work and work under the brutal sun without water, without much food, and without much rest. And yet, these people grew. They increased, they multiplied. And because they grew, Pharaoh ordered the killing of the male infants. They weren't even free to practice their own religion. Things were bad. And yet sometimes we need help that is beyond ourselves. No matter how put together we are, we need something that is beyond us. This story has often been embraced by American slaves in this country or during that time. When they got hold of this story, when they heard this story, they, they couldn't let it go. They, they were also facing harsh, inhumane conditions, work, 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 under a brutal sun, under harsh conditions, with little respite. If one tried to escape, one could be killed or whipped so badly that one might never try that again. Any signs of independence were responded to harshly. Success was heeding to the desires of your master 200%. And so this group of people would embrace this notion of a God that could intervene 
and make things better. A God that had their well-being in mind. Adversity comes in all sizes and all shapes. It comes for days and seasons and for years and lifetimes. And even in the case of the Israelites and American slavery, it came for centuries. What is our reaction to when we're going through? What is our reaction to when the rain comes at 3 a.m. in the morning? What is our reaction to when things really, really feel hard? What do you do when life keeps snowing on you? Today, I invite you to sit with the realization that God's got you. God's got us in God's hand. God's got you on her mind. The text today suggests that God has us, that in spite of our situation, there is hope for us in every situation, that the presence of the Lord follows us around even when we least feel it. We are not on this pathway alone, even if it feels like that sometimes. God's got you. God's got you. This lady was driving on a country road in Michigan in the middle of a snowstorm. Her car skids off the road, leaving her stranded. It's late in the afternoon, you know, when the sun is setting. Fear and panic settle in real quick. She attempts to call, but can get no reception. The temperature in the car is plummeting. She sees a headlight behind her. There's a knock on her window. She rolls the window down, and a man named Sam introduces himself. She explains to Sam the situation. They start working to get her out. They try different things, but her car still remains in the ditch. Sam says, let me go get a chain and I'll be able to hook it up to your car. And he comes back 20 minutes later. He's able to finally get her out of the ditch. The lady doesn't know what to say to this stranger whose name she knows but nothing else. Thank you doesn't seem enough when you're stranded on the road and somebody takes time to help you in the cold get out of a rough situation. Upon her saying, thank you, Sam, Sam responds, I got you. I got you, Gladys. I got you, Judy. I got you, Marsha. Yesterday, the UCC Illinois Conference minister was sharing the day that her child came out as a trans female. And shortly thereafter, she signed them both up for the women's retreat. So there they were with a bunch of, she said, 85-year-old women, herself, and her trans female daughter. At some point during the retreat, there was a space for sharing gratitude. What are we, what are we grateful for? And her daughter raises her hand, and they listen to her. And her daughter shares that she's grateful that on this day at this retreat, for the first time in a public space, others saw her the way she sees herself. That others saw her the way she's been seeing herself for years. Wow. That's pretty powerful. Not only does God see us, God sees what we're going through. God sees our condition. God sees how others treat us. God sees our oppression. God sees that Pharaoh is unrelenting. God sees what we're dealing with. God sees us. God loves us. And God's got us. I got you, Kenan. I got you, Edith. I got you, Judy. I got you, Belle. One of our sister churches experienced threat from one of the members. He took a sizable amount of money, which is amazing, right? Since churches are declining, they're struggling to raise money, that someone in the church working in finances would take money from the church. This man was dealing with an ailing wife. He was dealing with expensive medicine. He was dealing with medical bills. What he did was still wrong, but they heard him. They listened. They opened up their hearts, which, be, which 
It's hard to open your heart up when you feel like somebody's taking from you. But they manage. And they kept it confidential. And they set up a plan for him to pay it back. And they prayed for him. They saw him. They heard him. And they said, hey, we got you. I got you, Jane. I got you, Danielle. I got you, Wei Jin. I follow this TikTok influencer, and at the age of 20, she's successful. She trades stock. And I'm always just like interested and curious. There's so many interesting people on TikTok, and one or another gets me interested. But this girl at 20, who is about to turn 21, bought herself a Tesla and bought her brother and mom a Tesla. She's living nice. She's doing good. She's making good money. She lives in a nice, beautiful apartment. But her birthday came up, and she couldn't find anyone to celebrate with her. Well, I thought, wow, she's got all this money. She doesn't know who she can trust. And she has not one or two people that can celebrate her birthday. I know if she were at United Church of Hyde Park, she'd find some people, right? To say, hey, come on, say amen. Well, she'd find some people to celebrate her birthday. And what I realized, all the money in the world doesn't solve the way that God made us. And God has made us for connection and community. And we all come pre-wired with this need. Nothing replaces our need for the presence of other humans, and especially God, in our lives. We have to remind ourselves, because we can forget, and we do forget, that God's got us. God's got us, Paul and Ina Grace. God's got us. God has got us, Joe. God's got us, Jay. God's got us, Josiah. And whoever's name I didn't mention, because I don't want no one to leave and say she didn't come, God's got all of us. Amen? A lady is running to catch the train. Have you ever been just trying to run for public transportation and it's down to the wire and you see it and you're hoping they'll see you and you can make it? She gets there and she can't find her purse. The train is pulling up and the time is of the essence and she's going through her purse and she's pulling stuff out and she just can't find it. A stranger approaches her and says, is this yours? She looks at her wallet like she's seeing it. For the first time, she thanks him. The stranger says, no problem. No problem. I got you. A mom is in the store with her link card. It's getting thin. It's getting close to the end of the month. She carefully selects what's on sale and what's deeply discounted about to expire items in the store that are deeply discounted. She has her calculator, and even with all of the pressure to spend an allotted amount of money, she finds herself at the cash register with her items coming to more than is on her card. She tries to decide in haste what items she will put back when the person in the line behind her says, Okay, I'm gonna get, y'all gonna get it. I gotcha. <laughs> it's good to be gotten. Doubt worries the dark night of the soul. I got you. Aging, mortality. I got you. News from the doctor that you weren't planning on hearing. I got you. The heaviness of the day. The heaviness of the night sometimes, I got you. Feeling tired, like, do I really want to go on? I got you. In good times, bad times, I got you. Twist and turns, I got you. Feeling dread, I got you. Need a hand, I got you. Needing a God to part the waters, I got you. Unwavering always, I got you. 
The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. What a beautiful line in our Bible. That means that the love of the Lord never stops. It never ends. It goes on toward infinity. My line is always open, says the Lord. You might need to put a sticky on it, but I got you. Amen.